forecast. So basically, this one here, what we have here is this is the temperature anomaly. So this is the temperature difference from the norm, um, and this is the jet stream winds. So the temperature scale, we have 20 degrees, plus 20 degrees Celsius, minus 20 degrees Celsius. And each time the image cycles, we're looking down on the North Pole. So this is the North Pole in here. Um, you can see Greenland here. Um, and each time the image moves, that's three hours passing in the model. So the model starts on the 17th and runs through. Um, these are the universal time um, coordinate times and the dates. So what you can see happening, um, first of all, with the anomaly, um, you can see 20 degrees Celsius plus anomalies crossing across, right, going right across the Arctic, occupying very large areas of the Arctic. You can see 20 degree negative Celsius negative anomalies across North America, sweeping across North America like this. And what you can see is, I mean, it's being chased out here by warmer air and then chased out, the cold air chases the warmer air. So we're getting these temperature swings, uh, low temperatures, higher temperatures, low temperatures. But this area here in North America and this area up here in um, Asia are the coldest areas on the, uh, the coldest temperature anomalies on the planet. And you can see these massive warm temperature anomalies here. So this starts again at the 17th. I mean, look at this vast area of plus 20 degree anomaly going right through the Arctic. So if you look at the um, National Snow and Ice Data Cem Center Arctic Extent, what you can see is, yes, the ice is growing now, but then you get these stalling trends and they can be, you can relate those stalling trends to this warm area, area, area here. So what's happening with the jet streams? Well, the jet streams are very fractured, right? There's big gaps, there's chunks flying off, um, and it's very, very fractured. So what happened is, is because the movement of air from the equator to the North Pole has decreased, the jets got wavier, and then they got so wavier that actually chunks break right off. And this is very interesting. You can see there's a chunk here that's breaking off, and it actually moves in over the North, over the uh, Greenland, over Greenland there, over the North Pole. And look what happens, it, get caught, it gets caught here, and it starts rotating in the opposite direction to the uh, general circulation here and then it kind of dissipates out. So you can see that um, you know pieces, chunks are flying off of the jet stream. This is very unusual behavior. What this is showing is that there's a tremendous mixing in the high Arctic between the hot air coming from the south and the cold air over the pole. I mean, normally you have a very, very strong polar vortex here and it confines the cold air but uh, in this case, we can see that the air is um, continuously mixing. So we're getting a lot of mixing between um, very, very warm air from southern regions and very cold air from northern regions. Now, as cold air moves from the polar region southward, it's effectively causing more heat to go northwards. And as heat moves from the southern regions northward, it's carrying heat directly northward. So the net effect is we're, we're, we're destroying the general circulation pattern of the northern hemisphere. Um, and we're, instead of getting a strong temperature contrast with latitude, um, it's being completely destroyed by this mixing process. And as there's more and more mixing, it smooths out the temperature more and more. And uh, it's, it's completely disrupting climate patterns in the northern hemisphere. Um, now, in terms of absolute temperatures, um, what we have here is this is the temperature of the northern hemisphere scaling um, on the same scale and same time frame as the other ones. And this is the absolute temperature. So what we're seeing here is, excuse me, let's get my image back here get my technical people in trouble. Uh, what you're seeing here is look at this area. So this blue area and the light blue area is zero to minus 10 degrees. And then the darker blue area is minus 20 to 30. So what we're seeing is over the North Pole, uh, we're getting 
right here. Look at this blue area coming right over the North Pole here. Um, this is Greenland here. It's coming right across the Arctic and it's between 0 and minus 10. Meanwhile, in Canada, you know, I'm in Ottawa, you know, it's minus 20 degrees. Extending far down into the U.S., it's minus 20 degrees. So the Arctic is actually, you know, it's, it, the, Ar the Arctic's actually much warmer in these instances. But there's a lot of mixing, so it doesn't stay that way. Here we go again. Zero to minus 10, right up here. And down here, it's more like minus 30, minus 40 even. So this is, uh, this is completely unusual, completely messed up. Um, now, what is, is it just the Northern Hemisphere that is doing this? No. Um, what's happening, remember what I was saying about the overall uh, heat transfer. So, because the Arctic is warming from additional absorption of, the, of uh, radiation, um, it's warming by itself, so there's less need for heat to be transferred from the equator to the Northern Hemisphere. Um, the equator is warming a bit, actually not much. I mean, there's additional um, evaporation at the equator because it's a bit warmer. So there's more tropical, there's more um, an intensified um, uh, hydrological cycle. There's more evaporation, more vapor in the air, more rainfall events, more torrential rainfall events. Um, like I think in Laos, uh, they just had 120 centimeters of rain in the space of 24 hours. Think of that. 1.2 meters of rain in 24 hours. I mean, you know, we do expect big events, but this is, this is getting off the scale. So, because there's, um, the heat has to go somewhere. It's not going up into the north, so the heat is traveling southward. Okay, so this is a view looking down on Antarctica. Okay, um, so we have Antarctica here. And uh, so this is the view looking down on it. So the heat is coming from the equator down. Now, it's, win it's, um, it's summer in the southern hemisphere, of course. It's, north it's boreal winter right now in the northern hemisphere, so it's summer. So the jets should be, um, the jets should be pretty motoring around pretty fast here. But because there's additional heat traveling um, from the equator to the southern hemisphere, as a direct result of the Arctic albedo snow, ice, snow um, terrestrial snow cover and sea ice reduction of albedo and amplification of warming, the heat has to go somewhere. It moves southward, and it should be making these, uh, these, uh, the southern annular mode, the atmospheric circulation pattern, and also the ocean current pattern. It should increase those and kind of isolate Antarctica from, from the... Um, from the rest of the planet. Um, but what's happening is, um, so, so this is why the sea ice grows in Antarctica. Because the Arctic is losing ice, there's more heat moving south, it increases the intensity of these uh, circumpolar um, jets, further isolating Antarctica, so the surface temperature drops, so the sea ice grows. It's also related to more calving, more fresh water, around the continent, so the, 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 temp, the freezing temperature is higher. Freezing temperature of fresh water is zero. Um, when you get to seawater um, at 35 uh, PSU, which is standard average ocean uh, salinity, it's more like minus 1.8. So if there's more fresh water around, it's gonna freeze at a, at a higher temperature, maybe increasing the ice. The ice around Antarctica has been increasing about 1.5% per decade, and um, I think it's, it's like this uh, uh, classical seesaw pattern that we see um, in the paleo records. We get a lot of warming in the North Pole, we can get a lot of cooling in the South Pole. They can kind of seesaw back and forth. And this is kind of explaining that. I mean, Antarctica is still losing um, ice. It's still losing mass, but the water underneath is warm. And this whole, the, the whole Western, and, um, Western Antarctic uh, ice shelf is sitting on bedrock, which is um, very, very deep under the sea. So the water is moving in there and melting it from below. But what is really interesting in Antarctica is you can see these um, jet streams are very, very convoluted as well. Um, and you can see chunks breaking off. Now, because this is a high altitude, um, it's very it's colder at the top. Um, so that cold air starts moving downhill so the, the motion of the air is towards the coast. It's called the catabatic wind. 
So look what happens there as this jet, this piece of the jet breaks off, starts going over Antarctica and then gets pushed back to reform. Um, so it's kind of repelled by the continent. Meanwhile, the jet in the Arctic case, okay, look what happens. These chunks break off the jet and they move towards the, over the pole where they counter rotate. Um, so this is, uh, all of this is causing tremendous mixing um, in the climate system. And uh, I believe, um, I've, been, I, um, I've been researching this um, for, I guess, uh, about, I don't know, on, like for about four years, I suppose, but very intensely over the last two years. And what I believe is happening is that we have entered into a, uh, I believe that we're, in, in, um, we're undergoing an abrupt climate change um, today. Um, and uh, if you go by the, um, if you go by the paleo record data, um, the climate of the planet is capable of switching. Uh, well, the Greenland uh, ice core records, they show that the temperature has raised uh, has gone up from five to six, five to five six to ten degrees, typically in a, in a decade or two. Um, during the Paleo Eocene thermal maximum, going further back, um, there's clay sediment um, records which show, for, by some fluke, they show um, yearly cycles, and they show a massive change of about five degrees in the space of thirteen years. Um, and uh, during one of these transitions in the, and that's from a hot world to an even hotter world, uh, which is, which is so it's during an interglacial. Um, during the glacials, um, the six to 10 degree swings are called the Dansgaard Osher oscillations, and they're from a colder uh, state to uh, an interglacial state. But one of those changes was about, uh, I believe it was about 16 degrees Celsius. In, in a decade or two. So the climate, um, the climate system is very capable of switching very rapidly. And, uh, you know, uh, this, these changes here um, with the anomalies, you know, we're getting a total mixing of cold and hot air in the Northern Hemisphere. And the, these, so we've had 20 degree swings, like tw plus 20, minus 20, um, you know, that's a 40 degree delta, you know, and that mixing is, you know, like I say, it's making the Arctic, it's making the Arctic, uh, you know, about the same temperature or warmer than the Southern Hemisphere. So, you know, you, another, and this is happening like real time. I mean, this didn't happen last year, not to this extent. I mean, things were messed up last year, but I've never seen anything quite like this. So, uh, let's, we'll see how, uh, how things proceed and uh, I'll keep doing these videos. Thank you.